Hello, viewers. Welcome to EMD Media. EMD Media works on understanding, measuring, and doing. And it tries to contribute for uh, uh, evidence-based decision-making and discourse in the Horn and specifically in Ethiopia. Today, we'll be talking about the humanitarian situation in Tugray. For those who are following us on YouTube and uh, Facebook, uh, please, uh, for broader audience, share, subscribe, and like. My guest today to talk about this atlas of humanitarian situation in Tigray is Professor Jan Nissen from Belgium. Professor Hello. Nissen, welcome to UMD Media. Yes, greetings from Belgium. Great. Uh, it's great to have you. Uh, given the uh, subject matter we'll be talking about, you are uh, an expert, I must say, and you have been working hard as we speak today uh, for our viewers, today the 207th uh, day of the uh, war on Tigray. Uh, this is a daily update in terms of the numbers, in terms of the damage that happened. So as we speak, uh, 5.2 million people are still um, in need of emergency food assistance. Uh, more than 63,000 refugees are in Sudan. Uh, 27% of these are children uh, and so on. So the, there is, you know, a lot of damage, looting, uh, destruction of infrastructure, health, education, and so on happening. Uh, but as we speak, uh, you have been uh, working uh, maybe within a week, I must say, with the situation uh, in Tigray. So for those who uh, are not familiar with your work and who you are, I, I just want to introduce some uh, of the things that you have been doing. Uh, so you are right now at the University of Ghent, uh, a professor there, professor of geography. And there are, um, uh, I'm trying to uh, see this. And this is your uh, research gate profile, uh, where you update actually uh, from time to time. This is the the Facebook of the scientists, huh? <laughs> exactly. I, I I always say to my students, drop your Facebook, use research gate. <laughs> exactly, and okay. I can see there are three hundred five thousand, almost three hundred six thousand reads uh, on your uh, over uh, five hundred seventy uh, publications. And where is this? When is this? Is this? Uh, Adina, you. Adina, you. Adina, you. This is my country. This is Dogatambian. And this is where we were doing field work. And uh, where we have been, the latest that we were doing was research for geotourism. And the farmer sees us, please come, have some taita, have some soa. Some so soa. have some local bread, have some local beer, and uh, enjoy, and you will work after that. Exactly. And this is, uh, for those who may not know where Dogat Emben is, I just uh, want, it's, uh, how, how far do you have to drive from Mekale? Mekale, I can see. Uh, it. It, it, by, by now, when, when I started going there in the beginning, they were making the road, it took like four or five hours to go there. Now it's an asphalt and uh, even we were having the cyclists from Mekale every morning who came up and down to so, because Dokatendian is, if you look from Mekele to the west, you see the mountains high up there to the western side, and, and that is that is Dokatendian. Yeah. By the way, you are, you are using the old map of Dokatendian because just before the war started, the Tigray region has revised their waridas, and it has been eaten from all sides. Mm. But okay, that's less relevant in this, in this case. Uh, but I like it like that. 
because Doga Tambian is really like one mountain. Mm, mm. So, and, the, and the water that, the ancient water that corresponded to one mountain, and that allowed us then also to do this research, considering this one mountain massive. And there is Kola, uh, Kola, Temb Kola Tambian, yes, of Kola course. Tambian, which would be the lower side. That is then, yes, and the road is very long, but we. Well, the road is very long. The road is like 40 kilometers to Abiyadi, but we are having a very nice shortcut by a valley in, two, in not two, three hours. That's exaggerated, but in four or five hours, we could go on foot to Abiyadi. Yeah. Going down, coming back, that's another thing. And uh, you mentioned about uh, there was no road when you came, when you went there first. That was 1990. There was, there was a road. There was a road that had been made by Ras Mangesha. Mm -hmm. Ras Gesha, he was known for that, uh, that was his status too, he was building roads, he sits himself on the dozer, of course mm -hmm. he was giving a show in that case, but uh, there was a small a narrow road that was made by Ras Gesha that had been totally washed by erosion and when I came in 94 they were making the new road which was still a gravel road, the asphalt has come around 2014-2015. Mm. Uh, I think, yeah, of course, we saw you. I came there in '94, just after the after the civil war, after the, that civil war, and uh, it has it had strongly developed. And people are looking to roads, but that's not my main mm. way of assessing livelihood. But people eating three meals in a day, yeah, mm. people yeah. seeing a guest coming, sharing their food. And one time they invited me, and we were having hambasha. And I was like the oldest man with gray hair, so I needed to share that, to share the hambasha, and I was cutting it into pieces. And then the the people who were with me, they they pushed me, don't make it small because you can take only take one piece. Mm -hmm. So they were ready already. They were having large piece of bread for sharing to everybody, and you cannot say this was rich done, but at least they were out of misery. Maybe it was poverty. Mm. But there's a very big difference between misery. No, again, they are back to misery, of course. But there is a very big difference between misery and 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 poverty. And you see this man, yeah. okay, it's not, he is not rich, like you see him on the photo, but uh, we are happy together. Huh? Exactly. Actually, we'll be talking about that, you know, uh, how uh, things, when even the war started, your first reaction was not to take back that region or the community to 84 and so on. So we'll be talking about that uh, yeah, okay. in the perspective. So this is, uh, again, uh, talking about Facebook of uh, scholars, uh, Google <laughs> Scholar. I, I can see, you know, you are well published uh, with a lot of citations and still very active. Actually, I, I saw the, the recent one as well, even within the months that we have now, we are on the fifth month. Um, a number of publications oh. even in the new year. And it's a diverse area, I must say, from hydrology to land issues to uh, soil and water and so on. So, mm -hmm. um, and it all began in 94 uh, in the uh, uh, Doga Tembe, now the master's thesis. So what was the first time when you went in I mean, how did you end up going to Dogatembe? <laughs> oh, yes, that is, people ask me like that. Huh? Well, how did I end up going to Tigray? Exactly. Yeah? And I, was, I, I, I went there to study. I started studying geography because at that time, and still I believe soil erosion was a major, was a major problem. And I wanted to contribute somewhere to, to development. Maybe. And... Uh, and then I was thinking, which countries can I go in Africa to? I was looking to not to be with a missionary or something, but with local people who are doing. Mm. And then I, I came into contact with REST, Relief Society of Tigray. Mm. And they, uh, at that time, we were simply writing letters and waiting for a letter to come back. Huh? And, and so on. that was still the way of communication. And, but they, they replied to me. I went to visit them in their office in, in London. So we were preparing my field way to stay to come. And then the next letter that came, you know, there is a university that has started in Michele. Well, at that time it was Michele University College or uh, ARIT, yeah. like they call it popularly. And there is Professor Mitiku, who is in the same field like you, soil, ero soil and soil erosion and so on. And then we connected with, then where shall I go? And then rest says, we have two places to say, better to be a bit not too far from a town. We're having two places, Hagresilam and Maikinetal. 
Mm-hmm. And then seen seen while my Kineta or been to my Kineta afterwards, of course. Mm-hmm. But I was only having like six weeks eh, for doing my master research, my field research, so shouldn't go too far and so on. And then it, it was it ended up uh, in Hagra Salam, yeah. Mm-hmm. Interesting. You mentioned about uh, Professor Mutuku. Uh, and um, actually, here is uh, Professor Mutuku. <laughs> talking about Mr. John. Ah, yeah, of course. <laughs> and he talks about uh, how well you know Doga Tembin. He's yeah. actually as uh, like uh, your hand palm. So yeah, yeah. Some fa- uh, farmers will say he knows every stone on the footpaths. Not only he knows every person, he knows even every stone on the foot, which is a bit exaggerated, but of course, you know, my good thing was when I did my my master thesis research, even when I did my PhD research without field car. Hmm. I was on foot and I went on foot and going to the site, walking with the people you are chatting on the way, and then you hear the real story. Hmm. Yeah, When you go for an interview, they know a bit what they have to answer to make the researcher happy. But if you walk with them on the way and you sit, you drink some soa with them, then you know, you hear the real the real world, what is, what is going on. Huh? Hmm. And... Uh, uh, yeah, of course, that's how I got, I think, integrated in the uh, in the place. And I've continued to do research. research yeah, there. yeah. So, uh, I mean, starting with your master since uh, September 94, then, yeah. of course, uh, until this point, you have been supervising even graduate students working in the area and so on. So A, a lot of them, yes. Exactly. A lot of them from uh, Belgium and from Ethiopia as well. Yeah. And yeah. Uh, no wonder... You know this book. Yeah, that's. Yeah. Uh, I mean, uh, we will talk about a little bit. I will show our viewers at least the table of content. But yeah, uh, this is when uh, you were just two years ago. Yeah. Yeah, they made it very. They made a launch event, huh? mm-hmm. and they uh, so they wanted. There was like a small quarrel between Agra Salam and Mekele University. And they, because McGill University want to launch, no, 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 this must be in Hagra, in Hagra Salam. Yeah, but can, can you bring media or something? Because otherwise, uh, and yes, yes, we will bring media. And then Tigray TV came and Tim Swayane was coming and they were filming it. They, they broadcasted it. A lot of people came from McGill University to, to Hagra Salam. And even on that moment of the launch event in the afternoon, we took the guests from McKinley University to some of the specific sites in the field, and I think it was a very nice launch event. We are we were having very big plans. We have started making a geotourism office in Nagra Selam. We covered the roof even with grass to make it look like traditional traditional because everything is called corona corrugated iron. But we covered it with with grass. We brought a, brought a farmer who knows. And the people were even admiring us. Oh, how does he know? I didn't know anything about grass roof, but they imagined that I made the plan for the for the grass roof. And yeah, we were we were making lots of footpaths. Mm. Yeah. Even when COVID started, I was in contact with them. We discussed, and they were arranging the footpaths and everything. And then yeah, we are back to when whenever this war is finished, it, we are not going to continue on this thing because there are so many. I will not say we are back to zero. I don't. I don't believe that. I'm not pessimistic like that. But we have to start. We have yeah. to start again. Exactly. Uh, but when you were uh, talking about knowing the community and so on, so what I saw in in terms of the coverage, and even uh, the interdisciplinary nature of what you did in this uh, summarized in this book, is so amazing. So I mean, if you, I don't know if viewers can see the number of authors in each chapter, in each part, and the type of areas covered. I mean, the topics from setting the scene to the geology, to the hydrology water, and I can see uh, historical, sociological, cultural dimensions. Uh, and the most uh, fascinating, I, I don't know if it's the first ever, I think I read somewhere that this is the first ever to be done in that region, is the last part where you have the your trekking map? Yeah, yeah. Can you can you? I mean, uh, briefly. I know we we have to have uh, people read it and own it. <laughs> yeah. it but uh, t- t- 
tell us about this book. Oh, uh, yeah, th this book was meant to summarize, to popularize. We, we must have made like 150 research papers about Doga Tembia. Yeah, wow. Mod mod modeling this, yeah, uh, uh, entropy of forests with a lot of, because we were using it as a research setting, not only to work on Doga Tembia, but it was also like a sample area for many more other tropical mountains. And then we said, let's try now to extract those things that are specific to Doga Tembian and try to write it down in a language that is accessible so that a, a health specialist should also be able to read it. Yeah, or a socioeconomist should be able to read it. At least people who have some, some general, some good general background should be. So we popularized our findings and then we started looking around whoever did research in Doga Tembian to involve them. So there is a chapter about livestock. The different yeah. types of the different types of, of cattle uh, uh, and, and different type oh, the, the the wild animals the the, the birds uh, you know I know if uh, there is a bird I don't know their names but there are there are people who have really who have really studied that and by the way mm -hmm. not only Doga Tambian but many places in Tigray it's a bird water watchers it's a bird watchers paradise because for people you don't kill a bird. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, so I mean, you don't kill a wild animal unless, unless it is really threatening you. So you have a lot, a lot of biodiversity. And well, we try to highlight all that in the book. And then we made a map and we set up tracks for walking, yeah, for backpacking, for walking in, in the mountains and visiting those, those places. And it has even, yeah, here you see some, <laughs> some, some description and then you see even the topographic pro profile. But you know, it's, all, it's also funny when we say this walk is for the farmers in Dogatemi and the walk is easy. Hmm. But for Ferengi, this walk can be difficult. Huh? <laughs> so this, that scale is always a bit, uh, yeah. uh, it's always a bit uh, flexible, let me say. But we give them in the center there, you see then the topographic profile, you see how much you need to climb and to, to, to go down and so on. And there is a GPS tracking so that you can even have it on your, on your smartphone and you you start it and you can simply follow your smartphone it will tell you it will tell you where to, mm. where to. and you did you did uh, for 40 of this right in this yeah uh, yeah and uh, you uh, how, how, how big is the doga Temben area i mean the something like that that is the old war that before that was the revision it was like 1000 square kilometer so say 30 by 35 kilometer huh? okay yeah, and with some 100000 people Mm. And so these this tricks, uh, how, how did you identify them? I'm just curious, you know, because... Uh, well, it was uh, one, it was by identifying the interesting features that are on the way. Mm. You need two things. You need to have a good landscape view. Yeah, mm. if you are walking all the time in flat area, that is, it's not funny. Yeah? Mm. And you need to have good landscape views. And then there were many researchables that we, many things you, in these 150 papers that we have researched. Mm -hmm. And we plotted all these on the map, and then we tried a footpath to find the footpath that was passing through it, and we tried to fit with the footpaths that the people are commonly using. Mm -hmm. yeah? If you say, I'm, if you say to, if you are walking and you say, the, the people will always ask you, where are you going? I'm going to the Bahadera. Okay, mm -hmm. everybody, yeah, yeah, okay, he's going to do it. Yeah, you are looking on the way left and right, but if you have such a target. Where going, everybody will be happy. They may even walk with you to to show you the way and and, and so on. Right? Mm -hmm. yeah. Were there any such work done uh, elsewhere in Tigray? Uh, what what was done in Tigray were uh, touristic companies who were doing Tesla Trek, for example, around Mugulat. Mugulat. Yeah, they have some they have some guest houses, but then th this this is the intention of. Somebody, an individual could go there. You cannot walk as a Ferengi all alone over there, but you, you find somebody in the village to guide you and to walk with you. Mm. Uh, Tesla Trek is different. Huh? They bring the people by, by, by Land Rover to the place and then they start walking together. But they were doing this trekking tourism also. Mm. Mm. And yeah. you have the other places than Simeon Mountains. Mm. Big, what I was advertising to look at them, of course, Simeon Mountains, that's still bigger. But the good thing is in, in, in Simian Mountains, everything is controlled. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's natural park. Everything is controlled. You don't interact with society and so on. Whereas here you can walk. You could 
walk freely and you could interact with the people and 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 so on and that and that made it a bit different and you even show you know uh, which areas you go and uh, how high it is and so on right uh, yeah. so I, I could see you know i i chose this simply to represent the medium and the very difficult one yeah uh, and from two hours to ten hours yeah so, of course what are we seeing here for example when it says uh, minus uh, 1096 that dollars. means that plus 300 that means in the total walk you will be climbing 300 meters positively going up and you have 1000 almost 1100 meters down 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 wow and you see a bit that is from doga tambian to kola tambian i see okay. if, if you would do the walk reversely yeah then you are climbing 1000 yeah Okay. You have to start very early morning, but then you are climbing more than one thousand, more than one thousand meter out there. And uh, did you have to take any panel of uh, trackers and take the average, or was this ten hours, two hours, based on your own? Uh, no, I, I, I took. Uh, I think the young generation is going faster than me, but I took an average. Uh, I took an average uh, speed of two and a half kilometer per uh, I see. Uh, per hour, and then we and then we we uh, we have, we have river. This has gone to, to through many hands before we published it, mm. and uh, we discussed with people: Can you reasonably go to work come back from Agra Salam in ten hours? Oh, five hours is enough. <laughs> no, no, not for you, but not but not for me. Uh, and then, well, we we agreed on some. Yeah, that's a very, very, in, I mean, uh, the profile of that area uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. is in, you know, comprehensively, I must say, documented. If you this, is, this is not only for Tigray, this is even for Ethiopia, the only Warida where you have all the geology of Ethiopia in one Warida. Wow. Because there is this this big height difference of height. You walk down, 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 and you see all the different geologies, and every geology will have its own will have its own vegetation. Even the people adapt their livelihoods to the rock type, to the soil type, and uh, yeah, you, so it's very variable. Huh? Yeah. yeah, and uh, under each, for example, in the geology and uh, geomorphology, geomo yeah, you have, for example, uh, at least. I could see seven chapters there, mm -hmm. you know, under uh, vegetation and biodiversity. I mean, this is uh, a must-have book. Um, uh, I have, you know, the uh, through my library access to the soft copy, but I, I can't wait to have a, if there is a hard copy. Yeah, you have to go to Springer. Huh? Yeah, you have to see yeah. it with them. Great. So uh, that is uh, where. Um, Professor Mituku described what he said about you in terms of Mr. John knowing uh, everything and uh, he, wrote, he wrote another thing that you that you shown there. Yeah, and uh, maybe if you can bring it back. Uh, in his in, in his uh, ah, that's another yeah okay okay this one yeah here is somewhere uh, in sickness and health huh? yes yes yeah? that's uh, where yes, you. And uh, I so yes now then I felt also okay the sickness uh, now it is the time of the the sickness we need be you know I am in Hagrasilam I'm I'm member of Idir you know really? the social, yeah of course the social security now the Hagrasilam is too big for one Idir eh? there is there are a lot yeah. but uh, I am part of Selassie Idir and uh, that means in for those people who don't know that means in the neighborhood on one day that is Selassie we meet every. Uh, that is the sixth in Ethiopian calendar, and we meet very early in the morning before work time starts to discuss issues pertaining to our area. And most mainly, you know, I'm, I'm I was contributing ten bits per month, huh? so it's really a very small, uh, very small amount. Mm. And they even didn't want me to pay; they wanted me to be there to be on their side. And you know, when there is a funeral ceremony. I went there to help them building the tent. After 10 minutes, they say, Mr. John, it's, it's enough. You can go. Uh, no need to stay. You show. And I, I went a little bit for sharing a colo to the guests or something. Uh, but now I felt also uh, this. it is also in this case, it is very important. 
Yeah? And what can I do? These people are suffering in Agra Selam. I'm sitting comfortably in Belgium, despite all the worries. What can I do? So I felt a little bit, let me try to help them by doing this, this solidarity uh, initiative. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we'll uh, come into that. But y- you are right. Uh, when I read this uh, forward by uh, Metiku, I, that caught my eyes and um, the uh, in, in speak and out. I think you hear a lot of noise, huh? Mm. Ice cream cash. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so the, that caught my uh, attention actually, and then because of what we are uh, going through now, what they are mm-hmm. going through yeah, now. Obviously, yeah. Uh, but uh, but you mentioned even uh, the kind of uh, life uh, issues, life and death issues. You were part of Idr. Uh, mm-hmm. that's so uh, just I'm wondering how long the the, the longest he stayed in Dogatemben in one go was a year. No, no. Well, uh, I don't think so. I don't remember. Uh... I think the longest in one go was three months. Three months. Okay, but within that, no, you were. Oh, sorry, 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 six months. The, long, the longest I was staying in, even more. And then after that, I became a research uh, coordinator in McKilly University. And then I was. I have been staying for three, four years in McKilly University, Arid Campus. And then I was staying full year, except, except the holidays, mm. and going as much. They wanted to keep me in the campus. I wanted to go to the field, mm. and uh, yeah. And but then I've been going a lot to Hagra Salam also. Mm. And during your your time, you are part of that uh, social I- I- interaction in the social yeah. literature and others. Mm. Yeah, but this editor came very lately, huh? Only three four only three four years ago. I see. Apparently, it took that much time, or they were, you, you know, a little bit shy. He doesn't understand what it is, and so on. Yeah. They were shy because I was interacting. I know them all. I was interacting with them, but only three, four years ago, they came to, to ask me to to be part of the uh, of the edit. I'm just wondering if there are other, you know, Europeans or uh, Ferengi, Mr. John type member of editors in. Uh, I <laughs> guess I. I guess so. I know of, I don't know if they are a member of either, but I know some of them in several parts of Tigray and uh, who are very, and who are, because Hagra Selam is nearby Mekele, but you have people who have been living in places that are much more remote, that are only now hearing that about the massacres. You know, Hagra Selam people, as soon as there was telephone, people came to Mekele to telephone and to tell us what was happening. Mm. But if you take people who are around, uh, let me say, and Baguna, yeah, or Adit, mm. yeah. It is very late that on even not everything is known far from huh? exactly, exactly. Yeah. But Actually, there, are other, there are others who were uh, who were maybe even more integrated and speaking better Tigrinya than me. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. We will uh, we will have a test on that. Okay. <laughs> so the, this book and then uh, this one. Yeah, by This was yeah. the. Yeah, this was the this was first, huh? Okay, this was first. Okay, two thousand nine in Ethiopian calendar. So, Ethiopian. Can, can you can you read this for us? Yeah, Kapharas tot doga tembien entain semie by Mr. John. Ait seifu gebreslasi ait Roma asafa. That's the difficult one. And Tarugomti. Ah, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But that's then published and, and, and translated and so on. Uh, yeah, um, okay. And I must say that this is based, this this is, how should I say, we tried to popularize our research findings to the society. And that was the aim, that was the target of this of this book. This is a small booklet of, of 100 pages. And we tried to, to to write it in a very popular, to have the scientific findings, but also to write it in a very popular way, because you may see even, we mentioned the best Tassoa of Agres, of Doga Tambian, yeah? so, so to make it attractive to the people, huh? and the, date, the dates of Ametu, in which village do you have to go for having the annual village holiday? The aim is that people are also attracted by this type of information, which is useful 
for mm -hmm. them in uh, any way. And uh, then to write in simple, and we wanted also to write down the, 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 the indigenous, let me say the indigenous knowledge is a big word, mm -hmm. but people know so much about their land because they are farming this land since 3000 years. Eh? Exactly. I mean, that, that is 100 generations. Mm -hmm. So we are learning a lot from them. Uh, from them also, and that I wanted to highlight in this. And from this book came then the idea, why not we now, we now use all these different insights and we try to write it in some formal, in a formal book for the international uh, public. Mm -hmm. Interesting. I mean, uh, th this is a uh, crucial, like, you know, we collect data, we study, investigate research communities, but how often do we, you know, translate and write, you know, communicate back, you know, to... Yeah. Uh, and to then also there is, the, there is the communication style. We have seen sometimes people communicate back and they take the English article and they translate it in, in Tigrinya. Yeah. But that is done for the, that is done for the expert who is not fluent in, who is not fluent in English. He can see it, he can see it in Tigrinya. Yeah. But, th but that, if you simply translate the English article, you don't reach the... The common, the common the community. Yeah, very good. And of course, uh, November four, yeah, came yeah. and the war uh, erupted. And uh, the last time you were there, uh, uh, to my understanding, is before COVID. So, yeah. so I mean, very close to the war, you were not there. So. No, but it was already, let me say, it was already tense, huh? even so, even uh, in, uh, we didn't, because I was also not, not fully involved with that, I was there for, for uh, rural, uh, for rural development, and you know, I, I did also, I copied, well, copied, yes, largely, we were having a big, a big project with Michele University, and then Bahardar University asked us, why don't you do, why is this in Tigray, why not with us? Yeah, okay, everybody is Ethiopia and we go and we copy this project to Bahardar. So I was in, the, in that, that last visit, I was also in Bahardar. I was hearing aggressive talk and I, of course I felt, I felt uncomfortable with, with, with all that. Huh? Mm. And then I moved away from it. Yes, and mm. I was blocked with COVID until the war started. Mm -hmm. And uh, in this one, uh, what you did was within a week, so November 4, and I see this um, uh, appeal in terms of uh, bringing together scholars yeah. uh, together. And the headline is uh, what caught my attention as well. Uh, I think I, I was part of the first uh, signatories, uh, given that you talk about 1984. Yeah. So 1984, you know, uh, is a very uh, critical time for Tigray. I, I mean, uh, it's in yeah. books, it has been researched well, uh, you know, from different dimensions. So why did you have to refer to 1984 already within a week of the war? Ah, yeah, because we were, we were not thinking about this horrible thing that, is, that has come to Tigray. Eh? We were thinking about a classic war, let me say, death type. Yeah, that was a bit the type of war that we were, that we were expecting. Then there was, the, there was the COVID problem that has already disrupted a lot of, of activities. There were the locusts that were, uh, yeah, that have eaten 25% of Tigray's crop. Mm. Uh, then uh, add on that, uh, this whole disruption of, of the war and the, the, the fact that it was totally disconnected at that time, eh? 11 November, totally disconnected from the world. Nobody knows what is, uh, what is going. And knowing that we are in an area that is always on the brink of, uh, not on the brink of famine maybe, but just producing enough or even a little bit too, too little, uh, this would logically lead to famine. Yeah, that was our point of view. We didn't account for deliberately killing oxen. We didn't account for burning crops. We didn't account for burning houses. Uh, we didn't account for shooting on churches. We didn't account for chasing the people out of their, of their village. We were simply seeing what if you disrupt this 
agricultural system. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then all the rest, which is not classic war, huh? all the rest has all the rest has, has come, and that made it even much uh, much worse than what we anticipated at that at that time. Huh? Mm -hmm. And then we took you, you see the list that is there of the people who signed it, and you see 11 November. Yeah, takes a couple of days to get to get it because. In the beginning, you think, okay, there are skirmishes everywhere, and there are skirmishes everywhere in Ethiopia, and this will be, and then somebody say, no, no, this is a, this is another order of magnitude. What is going, what is going on? And then, okay, we, we need to get a little bit, get the text together, and by 11 November, we got it. Finding somebody who knows how to handle these things on the internet and so on, and yeah. Yeah, I see the first uh, initiators. Of course, your name on the top. But then uh, twelve other uh, scholars. Mm -hmm. there. So are these people who had, uh, you know, prior experience with Tigray, with the area, and so on? Or most, most are most. Are, I'm just screening it together with you. I think most or all of them, at some stage, have been involved with Michele University. I see. And we're having, and we uh, many of them. I knew them from from their time when they were working with McKinley University, and then we were trying to make it a bit, you see, at this stage we were staying, I think, Europe-wide. We didn't go across the across the ocean, mm -hmm. uh, but we were find, finding people who were from within Europe, from different countries who had been uh, who had been involved with McKinley University, and who agreed in signing this, uh, this text also. Yeah, uh, I mean, the last update uh, I have uh, from your, uh, uh, regular update is uh, three thousand two hundred thirty-eight yeah, people yeah. signed that by May uh, eighteen, and mm -hmm. uh, I mean the number of countries, the diversity is so huge. Uh, uh, understandably, yeah. there are many from Belgium, you know, from Europe and so on. Understandably, but um, I saw you know from small island countries uh, and so on. Uh -huh. so, Aruba or Big Island, Japan, uh, yes, yeah, yeah. Exactly. Zambia, uh, yes, yeah. Yeah, yeah. and uh, yeah, still uh, for those who are uh, maybe seeing this for the first time, it's, it's still going on, it's open. Uh, you Google you Google on those words and you, you find it and you can sign. Exactly, exactly. And then so, there, is a pos there is a possibility to opt in uh, and then those people who, who tick uh, they will also receive our newsletter that's coming out every 10 or 12 days to let updating on the situation. Exactly. Yeah, we'll be talking about that uh, briefly. So in collecting this, you know, let's say 3,238 uh, signatories from different, including Ethiopia from, you know, 14 different universities. Yeah, but we, were hide we are hiding their names. Yes. Yeah, because there is a list of signatories which everybody can consult, but for the Ethiopians we discussed among ourselves. You know that we were, I was very shocked when this came out two days later. I will not mention names, but I received emails from senior colleagues from other universities in Ethiopia. Hmm. You shouldn't do this. Yeah? You, you shouldn't do this. Uh, we are waiting for this war since 20, 30 years. Don't make any obstacle. Now, these are major university professors who are writing like to me like, uh, like this do how do you think that our future cooperation will be after you publish this please take it back yeah this was the type of of talk that i got and that was the polite version the impolite version was you junta and all this type of uh, of things you know there has been one professor from ambo university seum he has been insulting us one hour and a half on amhara mass media about about this thing junta and all this uh, all this time and that was something we were not expecting we if you read this text we were maybe even too polite mm. we, did ev we did every effort because this has been signed by rectors of all universities in belgium and so on we did every effort we are not here taking we are not taking position in here mm. Mm. we are saying stop this war yeah make a negotiation but don't continue, don't continue fighting. But simply saying, stop this war, don't continue fighting, that was too much. Mm -hmm. And that, is, that was a big shock for, that was a big shock for us to be insulted simply for, for coming with this, with this initiative. And insulted by senior professors yeah. in universities, scholars. Yes, scholars. yes, yes, yes and, obvious. And, and um, you know what, uh, uh, 
uh, is hard to understand is the fact that if they can do it at that level to people like you who are just arm's length to the issues there, but just saying the obvious, if yeah. you do this, there will be millions of people who would be suffering, who would be dying. That, 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 is, that is clear. We were having from some, from some universities, we were having Tigrayans who were staff at the university coming, needed to come to Belgium. When they needed first to travel by bus to Addis Ababa, in the bus station, they picked them, ah, Tigrayan, in prison. So yeah. I, tele I telephoned to the, to the university, what is this, our student is in prison, ah, we cannot do anything, this is the law. This is law enforcement, huh? something. Yeah. You're, yeah. All, you're all staff and you allow them to be, to be, taken, to be taken like that. Yeah? And then finally, finally they make it, they come to Belgium and then they, they came to thank me and to say, what is, you are doing much more for us than our own, uh, than our own professors. And that made me also feel that if they are insulting to, uh, to us, what about the defenseless people? Huh? They are doing exactly. much. Exactly, exactly. That's my point. You see, that's the millions, the innocent, the kids, the children, yeah, the women, course. the youth, yeah. the elderly, you know, who are uh, mercilessly being mm -hmm. killed and so on, has a deep-rooted, you know, uh, base, so to speak. If you can, you know, if, if uh, the scholarly, you know, that uh, makes you uh, ask the right questions, the why, the how, the why not, and so on. Uh, that's, you know, what uh, this uh, 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 war and this genocide is uh, uh, unique in uh, uh, many ways. Uh, mm -hmm. Continue with this, you know, depending on the what you were talking about. You did this uh, Atlas of Humanitarian Situation mm -hmm. in Tigray. And uh, uh, tell us how you ended up doing that and how you saw, because I saw the April 30th report uh, on that, the published one, around 70 pages. Again, yeah. very detailed, well-documented, you know, a, a mm -hmm. scientific endeavor. So uh, for those who don't know, I just uh, put the URL address here. Uh, it's this a is the, document, but can you, this, can you pick it up? This is an online version. Yes. This is an online version where you go there, you can zoom to specific places, and you can, we call it layers, you can, this gives you the topography, you can put rainfall on it, or you can put a number of refugees or IDPs on it, and you combine, can combine the data, you can zoom, zoom to a particular area. You need a little bit of, it's a bit working like, let me say, Google Maps or Google Earth. Uh, it's mm. a bit, Mm. It's working in that way for people who don't know, but you should at least be able to be fluent with such tools, then you can handle this one also. Otherwise, we have the, we have a, let me call it a, a more classic version, which is a PDF, yeah, which you could be printed also. And there we have, we printed like 22 maps of Tigray at the scale of, of A4, huh? and we print about, according to different topics. Mm. And there we have, we are working we aim at bringing out once a month, so after a couple of days, a new version will will come. There will be some updates. There will be some new maps, uh, new maps in it. I'm very happy also to have several colleagues who are very much helping with, with this one, because then you see the tool that you showed in the previous thing. This is the young generation who is doing that. Yeah, mm. I am not. I am. I was helping in conceptualizing and so on, but it's the young generation who is doing much of this mapping. Of this mapping thing, and they are very committed. In, uh, mm. yeah, the yeah. idea is the idea is one to show. Well, here you see something. Yeah, the idea is one to show what's going on, huh? to show the massacres that are going on, to show the people who are displaced. You know that, and you may show some other maps later on. I will comment them at that uh, at that uh, time. Uh, some maps are sim are especially for a bit saying what well, massacres where is it happening yeah uh, mm -hmm. here you see yeah uh, here you see another you see this big hot spot there uh, around uh, Adwa Aksum yeah. uh, now now you see uh, this is only what has been informed yeah exactly. so many things because people will tell you every village mm -hmm. people will tell you every village bad things have uh, 
have happened. So what we are showing is what we could verify. Because when people, one thing is saying there is a massacre, where was the massacre, which date was the massacre, how many people, what is the evidence, we are not doing the investigation. There are, this is not our profession, let me say, yeah. You mm -hmm. see in the in the lower left corner, you see all the massacres that yeah. uh, that occurred. But those people who investigate go to all these places. Yeah, mm -hmm. talk to the people. Uh, don't simply trust, you know, uh, your prime. Well, <laughs> I can say your prime minister was mm -hmm. saying nobody was killed all the way from Dancha to to Humera to Sheraro to Shire to mm -hmm. Adwa to Aksum to Adigrat. Nobody was killed. Yeah, that's mm -hmm. what, that's what he told. Hmm. And then when it comes out, everywhere people have been, everywhere people have been killed. So one, one, one thing is to to show to show that the other on some maps is to give baseline information to international organizations. We get telephone calls from NGOs, telephone calls or emails or and so on, or teams meetings, NGOs from embassies and so on, and they are also interested about topography about rainfall about cropping season because they want they need to know the whole the whole situation because different places in Tigray have a very a very different uh, a very different conditions mm -hmm. yeah very uh, effective in terms of uh, the transparency for those who want to follow so this is from 28th of April where we talk about the data sources and um, like you were mentioning before this is the I think you use the most updated one in terms of the maps, the water does, the districts. Yes. Right? Yeah. 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 And um, maybe you can, uh, for those who want, you know, to see the live map, um, we can, you know, maybe do that a bit. I don't want to keep you for long, but this is a great work that uh, people should know. So this is the live uh, map. Uh, so yeah, and then the, on, on the right, on the top, you can click what you want to see. So oh, maybe oh, okay. the, so this yeah. is the layers, right? Yeah. So if I want to maybe go down there, popula uh, massacres here, so I can yeah. click here. Yeah. yeah. So they appear. Yeah. And obvious that if, it's obvious that if you click too many things, then it becomes uh, clogged. Yeah. yeah. You have yeah. to select. You have to select. And yeah. So conflict incidents, for example, I can turn off these and yeah. then turn on the conflict incidents. Yeah, and that is then what we uh, we have. We have the, the, thanks to the fact that we have been working there since since ninety four. So many contacts and uh, people sent us a huge work to manage it all, and uh, that's why we have a, a lot of people who are, are helping us to do that. Yeah. And, uh, and um, so what would be, for example, here is from, um, again, April 28th. Yeah, you see from time to time it's updated, huh? Okay, yeah. yeah. Okay. So the so same at the different times, right? At different times. Whereas if you, take the, if you take the PDF, then you have only the most recent version. Exactly. This one allows you still to see the previous uh, information like it was available earlier on. I see. I can see that, you know, how uh, things change, yeah, and so on. Yeah. And of course, the uh, normal, like, you know, uh, location where the Tekaza River is. Yeah, uh, people, hmm. it's simply helping for, for, lo for localization. Huh? Yeah, yeah. Exactly. Uh, and of course, there are many of them, like, you know, uh, refugees in Sudan, uh, all, you know, the internally displaced people. Yeah. Um, so many data in terms of different timeline, uh, internal migration, mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, and so on. So very here you see here here you see in 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 red color the darker it is the yeah. more out out migration. Mm. Yeah, okay. let's call it out migration. Even though the people have simply been chased out, huh? they didn't choose to to move. Uh, in red color is the out migration. In green color is in migration, and if you would if you would zoom around Chile, it's you, have, you see it's a bit blurred already. You have too many. You have indicated too many uh, features there. Uh, exactly. But if you yeah, but 
there are places like Shire, and that's the, 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 the worst where all these people who moved out from Western Tigray, most of them, they are in Shire. Mm. But some, some people more to the east, some people have moved to Afa region. Mm. Mm. Some people have moved to, to Amara region. Yeah, here, yeah. And it, it, even if your origin is from Western Tigray, at least if you move to the Barak, there will be nobody for killing you. Mm. Mm. Will not be happy there, but at least nobody will kill you. Mm. Uh, or the chances, the chances much less. So people moved also to, to different places, mm. uh, to Amara region and to, but mostly they moved to a few towns that are getting Shire, Adwa, Aksum, Mikele. I think those are the Abiyadi. Those are the places that are getting most of these uh, IDPs. Hmm. And uh, the the other um, what I like most is the is you try to be as comprehensive as possible in terms of data source and so on, keeping it academic, keeping it arm's length. Where I see here, for example, aid according to the interim government, yeah, uh, uh, according to Minister of Peace. Yeah. So you you triangulated or you used a lot of yeah because this was this was junk data that they were giving act actually yeah, they were uh, they were at a certain moment they got pressure international pressure and then they they published reports of where they would have been distributing aid and then these places were not at all accessible yeah at that at that time there were names there are names of foreigners that even we have never heard of. But they simply put it in the list, and you know, you give that to an ambassador. Ah, yes, these people have been to twenty-eight places, and then even even if you take one Warada, if you go to the Warada capital, the people in all the area they don't, mm. they don't, they don't get it. Huh? So uh, that is a bit that is a bit improved now. Huh? Mm. That is improved in the sense that now there is not mm. international mm. organizations are there are trying to to assess what is going on. But they are not doing the last mile. The last mile is from the last store to the beneficiary. Exactly. Yeah, and, and, yeah. That, and, that, and that is where the looting is happening. And if somebody, you know, a very common, because lots, lots of corruption in, in, in there, the whole lorry, the whole lorry which that is going to one Warada can be diverted to a grinding mill. Mm. And then the owner of the grinding mill gives some money to the driver and to the to the PP guy who people call them the PP guys, uh, mm -hmm. prosperity party officials yeah. uh, that are done with with that lorry and it is unloaded in the grinding mill, mm -hmm. yeah, and then uh, uh, or the floor factory or the Eritrean soldiers they loot it or they make the people sign for fifteen kilo and they give them seven kilo. Yeah. I, if yeah. you if you don't sign you don't you you get nothing. Yeah. Okay. What can I do? Then I sign for. For 15 kilo, even though I get to less, uh, you need to eat uh, at least something. Exactly. Uh, yeah. But as compared to that situation, I'm talking this this Ministry of Peace thing was, I think, in January or in February, trying yeah. to cheat the world, saying that we are doing something. Uh, it has it has improved since since then. Yeah, at that time, actually, they were talking about you know 85 percent was done. And so on. Yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah. And you have also even like uh, services like internet service, telephone service. Yeah. Uh, where they are and. Um, uh, where they are not especially. Yeah. Still, still now, two days ago, I tried, you know, in Hagar Silam, when they want to reach me, they climb to the top of the mountain. Mm. Because from the top of the mountain, they can reach, they can reach uh, Mekele. Mm. Uh, but when I try to call to my friends in Hagar Silam, still now I cannot reach. Mm. Yeah. It's the same, you know, for many. And uh, what's uh, worrisome now is uh, where you are focusing as well is the agriculture scene yeah. coming, right? So <clears throat> you, you have this data on uh, average start growing uh, period in terms of yeah. and so on. So uh, speak to that uh, because you have been there, you know, a number of times, you know, yeah. they live and how you know, uh, so no, normally you should be you should be able somewhere to click and to see the legion. Uh, but anyway, uh, what well, I can tell you what uh, now you click click on the average start of growing period. Yeah, yeah, and maybe to the left you have a very small R triangle. This one, yeah. Just yeah, and now you scroll down a little bit so that we can see it, and that's how it works. And that gives you the months. That gives you the month. Okay, yeah, the legend, yeah? 
they're like diligent and that gives you the month when the growing season starts now when most of the writers growing start season will be starting by the end of june and yeah you, you so see, that's why we have a lot of this orange right yeah, all, uh, that is mostly, it will start in June, but in Southern Tigray it is much earlier and in many parts of Western Tigray it is, uh, it is in May, in May also. Oh, and then, February, March, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because they have, they have this Asmera rainfall, which is always very, which is generally very, uh, very good. So we have then been looking and the people have been, farmers have been very afraid for plowing, because you can get killed when you plow, the Eritreans don't plow. Mm. We have been doing, and it's on the way of pub publication, you will see it soon. We have been doing satellite uh, analysis of satellite imagery. And first we found out that this satellite images were not giving the same message as what the people were telling us. Because we see that people are plowing. Mm. We see that people are plowing. Then we started telephoning. And yes, especially after the uh, Vashika, after the... Ethiopian Easter, the people have come out for, for plowing. And yeah, the main reason is if you go to plow, you may get killed. But if you don't plow, what are you and your family going to eat next year? So this is a very, very difficult, very difficult balance. Huh? But yeah. then what people also observe it is that Ethiopian and Eritrean soldiers, they are moving away from the rural places. They move to the roads, they move to the, to the towns mm -hmm. and they have a very bad strategy. Don't attack us or we massacre the village. We will not come to your mountains to conquer and to occupy every village. We don't care about, that's a bit the message, we don't care about these, about these mountains. Yeah? But if ever you come to attack us, we massacre people. Mm -hmm. yeah? That's a bit their way of warfare like it has turned now. But that means that People are confident and they look out and they have people who, uh, if you see a lot of lorries coming, you better move away with your oxen and so on. And that's the way how they are plowing. Mm. Uh, except in Western Tigray. In Western Tigray, most of the lands are unplowed. Yeah, they moved out the people eh, and the lands are unplowed. We can even recognize on satellite imagery the fields where the standing crop of last year has not been harvested. Wow. Simply the, sor the sorghum was standing, shattering its seed, of course, you cannot harvest that anymore, but simply the crop, the crop is still now, the crop is standing there, and you know we have now sentinel imagery, it comes every five, five days with a very high resolution, and we can see a lot of, of things there, and then the irrigation schemes, the people are working also, the people are mm. irrigating, mm. but they shifted the irrigation crop from cash crop to subsistence, subsistence crop. Mm -hmm. yeah? not growing onions or tomato or cabbage, which they need to market, it's difficult and so on, mm. but uh, wheat or maize or teff or at least to, to grow their own, their own consumption. Food. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I, when is this coming? Because this is very important, like you were mentioning. Yeah, well, I'm, um, we have submitted it to one scientific journal for, for publishing. So yeah. I want, it takes time, you know that, before we publish, but as soon as it is in process, we will publish a preprint. Okay. Yeah, but after a couple of days, it should be available on ResearchGate also with okay. the satellite, with the satellite imagery and everything. Yeah, I think it would be very uh, uh, helpful if we can talk about once it's out, because that would be uh, the most recent and the most, uh, I mean, relatively yeah. credible one. So uh, for those who are, uh, you know, looking at what we are doing here. Uh, it's very important. I mean, uh, it would be very helpful if they can look at the, you know, huge amount of data behind this in terms of um, fully documented, uh, current uh, food security outcomes. This is uh, looking at uh, what would maybe be happening by September 2021 in terms of yeah. projects. Yeah. Mm. yeah. Well, so, well, of course. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, in terms of uh, use of these, um, are uh, or maybe they have their own tool as well. So, uh, do you see other stakeholders like aid organizations um, in different, you know, national and uh, international organizations uh, knowing about this work and using it? I I I think so. Huh? I think so. Or if you if you look on ResearchGate. 
or Atlas has been consulted 20,000 times mm. yeah, so far, uh, which is quite which is quite good. And then people can download, people can share it. And very often when I get communication, sometimes from people whom I don't know at, at all from international organizations, ah, we have seen your Atlas, thank you very much. This is very helpful. And then they come with their question. So I think, yes, they are, uh, they are using it, <laughs> let's hope. Uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Great, yeah. Uh, this is a very helpful. And on this, uh, on top of this, you do every ten days to, like you said, to twelve days, an update, uh, an overview, a summary of both in terms of the atlas, uh, first-hand information, and uh, mm -hmm. media roundup. Uh, I would, yeah. I would yeah. call. So uh, the latest I saw is uh, your twenty-third uh, follow-up. Maybe twenty-four. I don't remember the number, but yeah, twenty. Uh, anyway, yes, you see, yeah. you see a little bit since eleven November that those are the people who signed the the people who signed the appeal that you have shown, and if they tick, I want to receive information, then they they are in that yeah uh, they they are in that list. Yeah. So given you have been very you know closely working on all these uh, the update the map and so on, so uh, if you have an audience uh, that is just you know hearing about what's happening in Tigray. What would be your characterization of what's happening right now? Yeah, that is that is so bad. I was telling you all this, all this. Oh, I am I am afraid, honestly, to say I've always been indulged. Shall we use the word genocide? The intent, the intent is there. The intent is there, but. I am not a specialist in that, and people who are a specialist in that, they will say it needs something more to call it a genocide. And especially if you pronounce the word genocide, the media are going to discuss an academic discussion. Is this genocide or not? Mm. Whereas my message is so many bad things are happening. And I want to talk about all the bad things are, that, are, that are happening. And what I feel like is they want to, to hammer the, society, the Tigrayan society. Yeah, they sh we shoot on churches. Even God will not stop us. Your priests, we don't, we don't care. If we round up six priests and we shoot them, even Mengistu was not doing that. Huh? Mm. Yeah, this this overall rape of women. Yeah, that probably in war sol soldiers are doing that, but they get instructions. Mm. You know that you know that Abiy Ahmed two times he has given the green light for rape. Yeah, if you listen, if you listen what he says, one time he was saying. One time he was saying in the parliament, uh, these women have been raped by men, but that's not so bad. Our soldiers have been killed by knife. Mm. Yeah. One time he was saying that. Another time, even before the war, you know these Tigrayans, they are not really Tigrayans. They are mixed with Oromo and Amhara, because each time when an army is going there, they are having sex with their women. Mm. Yeah. So this is giving a green light to, to soldiers. We are going to kill that Tigrinya nationality, that Woyani spirit. And we are going to hammer and don't ever try to race against us, against us, the center, against Shoah, or I don't know. Don't ever try to race against us because you know what will happen if you race against us. That is the message that is. That's how I, that's how I, I see. And that is what explains all these youths that are running to the mountains. Huh? Mm -hmm. yeah, because there yeah. is there's something very bad is coming, is happening. Mm. Yeah, so like I was showing this, uh, this um, uh, dashboard and your work, your detailed and live documented, uh, well documented uh, database and so on. These are numbers, and behind these numbers are, you know, horrible, uh, horrifying, and you know, gruesome stories mm -hmm. about people. So, you know, I know you have been going through this for seven months now. Can you share with us, with our viewers, the story that stood out for you? Oh, so there are there are so there are so many. Maybe one one story is about the, the, the one of our villages where we have been where we have been working, and that village was nearby is nearby an exclosure. We call it an exclosure. That means reforestation area. I have to say it maybe. A simple word, and 
we we used to drive by with with car with a field vehicle up to that village and then we started walking down 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 inside the gorge to find uh, to find the forest and then you climb out you're very tired the people give you soa the people give you taita mm. um, and then some months ago the eritrean soldiers they went there also they had seen from far that there are gorges and forests you know they're always looking for getacho and for debrezio mm. yeah, that is a bit there uh, uh, so they went to that village uh, where is getacho where is debrezio uh, we don't know are they in that forest are, are there caves over there yes there are caves over there but we have never seen them something and then the eritreans went down there and uh, they came out they, after by the evening they climbed out without finding whom they were looking whom they were you know tigray is tigray is big how many gorges and, and forests and, and and so on and they climbed climbed out they reached the village uh, Aulo is the name of the village, Aulo Mariam. And they reached the village again, they were tired. And then they started shooting on the villagers. Mm. And they killed 23 people. And then when I communicated with my friends from Agra Salaam, I asked them, but these people were not opposing any. They were having simply the bad luck to be on the end of the road. All the military vehicles were stopped there, they were tired. Ah, but when they come back from the field and they are tired without result, they must kill. Hmm. That's the message that I. That's the message. You are tired, so you must take revenge on the on the on the civilian simply for being tired. Yeah. Huh? Uh, well, that is one of the. Of course, there are many horrible stories, but uh, and then twenty-three people randomly, but more men than women, but from seven to seventy-seven. Huh? That is really the whole range of society. I think. Yeah. Yeah. So, and then, so the people made the mistake for not rushing away, yeah? Yeah. 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 And um, and uh, there are many uh, people from Tudrai in the diaspora who have to this day, after 207 days, have no clue whether their beloved ones are alive or dead. Uh, so because you, you are a member of an idr, in uh, Dogatembe, yeah. and um, how are the people you were part of, you know, in terms of communal union, so to speak? What how, are they, how are they doing? Uh, do well, 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 what they, they, this, this either is no, you know, there's also a lot of lawless, lawlessness because you, police is not, if there is still police, they are not allowed to have, to have weapons. And there is not only you have the soldiers who do a lot of bad things, but you have also a lot of petty criminals who use that opportunity now. Uh, walking around even in Hagar Salam, you can aggress in the middle of the day and nobody will come to help you, huh? which is something unimaginable in, in Tigray. So it, at the level of Idir, people are patrol, patrolling their neighborhood. Yeah, they agree for... Uh, uh, Today you and you and you are not going to sleep, but you are going to 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 be awake and to watch out and and, and so on. And uh, uh, so they try even to supervise their to police their area to try to prevent looting and and uh, uh, and such things. The soldiers don't come in the night. Mm. Yeah? Mm. Soldiers come in, in in full day, but in the night uh, uh, criminals can come. So people now organize themselves to to protect their to try mm. and protect their area. Yeah. Uh, we're approaching the last uh, segment. Uh, I don't want to keep you more than um, I did. I have already done. So, uh, how do you assess the, in your perspective, the reaction of different actors in this? So, for example, we mentioned about uh, professors, you know, scholars in Ethiopia. Uh, for me, uh, I also have collaborations with universities. You know, I've been uh, active. Uh, in my uh, group in terms of church for so many years, but uh, to be only disappointed that nobody did, or, you know, they, they even try to justify every uh, killing that's happening. So how do you assess what you saw in general? Oh, but I had to, do, you I had any, to... do you have any precedent, you know, in other countries or communities, this large scale of uh, 
No, what, what I'm very upset about is the whole fake, the whole fake attitude that has been there. We went to Bahadur University believing, look, we were having a project in Mekele University, why it is this all Ethiopia, why wouldn't we go to Bahadur University? Do the same. We brought people from Mekele University with experience to explain to the Bahadur people how to start it and so on. If they had set us from the, ah, but we want to make a war against the Grai. Yeah, we, we wouldn't have gone, huh? But now they say we are, we are just waiting for this war. Yeah. Uh, so that is, that is something that was already very, very fake. I, to, in, in, in my view, let me say like, like, like that. I would also not, the whole politics of Ethiopia since, many things have gone wrong, huh? Since, since, uh, is even in the EPRDF, in the EPR, EPRDF time, it became very bureaucratic, it became very top-down, but the same in Bardar as in Mekele, yeah? this top-down attitude was uh, was there. And uh, you know that people in, when I was there in the first time, in 94, people were complaining. Our leaders, they are not with us anymore, they moved to Addis Ababa, the farmers were saying they are enjoying Addis Ababa. That was then the, mm -hmm. uh, and you have to go to that party and then you will be able to enjoy Addis Ababa. That was a bit there. So there was this, there was this unhappiness and that became then by 2017, by 2018, you heard that talk. It, then it's vanished a bit away, but by 2017, 2018, can you imagine if Malasi was concentrating on Tigray rather than trying Maybe now they say it's against their will, rather than trying to develop the whole Ethiopia. Can you imagine that if all these people, Seyum and so on, if they were had been concentrating on, on Tigray? Mm. Uh, and that is a bit what people were then seeing in the in the end. Maybe they are uh, maybe they are be right. I, I have to say honestly, I am I am stopping also cooperating with those universities. How can I how can I cooperate with a university that is insulting me for doing humanitarian? Mm. Not saying everybody. Yeah, I'm not saying everybody. There are people uh, that has to be said. <coughs> has to be said also. There are people who are at least feel sorry mm. or are sympathetic or say we don't know what's going on in this country, but it's going crazy. You have these people also. Right? You have people who are very war talkers, but you have other people who really see that it is going that it is going wrong. Mm. But the general, you know, of course, university management is politicized. They have to talk like they're like their political bosses and then yeah if you get all the time war talk and being insulted for doing doing humanitarian activity why would i i'm near nearing my my retirement age why should i i just hope that peace will come soon enough that i can go back to to tigray and to dogatembi and, and to start working again with them to to build it up huh? that's what i'm going to what i hope to spend my energy on in the coming in the coming years mm -hmm. And uh, on the international community, uh, European Union and uh, countries like Belgium, um, uh, maybe I'm not sure about Belgium, but the European Union in general was uh, proactive, relatively, I mean, compared to other regions. And yes, so in the beginning, if, if Belgium also, huh? uh, Belgium also, because Belgium was a member of the Security Council in this, up to the end of 2000, uh, 2020. Yeah. 2020, yeah. and Belgium has been quite active. It has for a long stay. I was always, I became angry with them. Serious concern, yeah, very serious concern. That they try each time to find some superlative. Exactly. But when will you start hammering them? Yeah. And uh, my idea, my first idea, and then people were telling us, yeah, but if you take sanctions, it will be the poor people who will be affected by sanctions. Mm -hmm. But my, I was having an idea if you could cancel flight right, landing rights for Ethiopian airlines, that could be a big message. Mm. I think also now these travel restrictions, this is a big message. Mm. Mm. Because if you looked into the, into the, it's less in Eritrea, but in Ethiopia, how many big bosses in these ministries, they are American nationals. Mm -hmm. Yeah? Sure. Yeah? So mm. when travel restrictions are coming, they will have to choose, shall I stay in Ethiopia or shall I rush back to, to my comfort in the in the United States, huh? mm -hmm. so they are directly being being hit, and I am. It seems now they want to. It's very, it's very. In fact, it's you know, 
if it's not that bad, it could almost be funny. They want to do manifestations about Western intervention and so on. Uh, I think next Sunday they try to organize uh, some, some demonstration in Addis Ababa about Western uh, intervention. I would say the West or democratic countries have been waiting so long before they reacted. Mm. Uh, they are even too late in, 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 in reacting. And when you speak about Western intervention, they are selling the telephone company to international companies. They want to sell they, they, they want to sell the airlines to international companies, which was really a good working good working enterprise. They want to sell it to international companies. Mm. But then when they speak about Western intervention, it's only when they are looking on their fingers for all the crimes that they are doing. Mm. And then they speak about our independence. We want to continue allowing raping and massacring, and that's not your not your bit. No, sorry. That's the business of the whole world if in some country massacres are happening. Mm. Mm. Yeah, that's, you know, the hypocrisy is uh, over the roof when you see, for example, sovereignty and so on. So you have Eritrean forces controlling the <laughs> yeah. act of Tigray. And, 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 and the Arab Emirates, because that was, yeah, the Arab Emirates with their drones, uh, something that has really not e enough been researched. Huh? Exactly. Even... Uh, uh, actually, they are the vocal, uh, at least the parents are demonstrating where are our kids and so on. So in Somalia, you know, even soldiers from Somalia who were, uh, you know, taken to Eritrea and then to Tigray and so on. So yeah. there are many domestic and uh, uh, regional, uh, international mm -hmm. actors in that war. So, uh, but I am still uh, wondering how they can't see this. A contradiction when they say you know stop uh, inter uh, intervening in our uh, but they have been they have been they have been using that arguments one after the other huh? exactly. i mean i mean uh, that I, I don't see much sincerity in there huh? yeah. yeah every bad argument has been how many times have, do they have, have been have they been lying there is no eritrean available there is yeah. no eritrean present yeah and that there have no been, been no massacres. Oh yes, there have been massacres, but the massacres was by were by Eritreans. Mm. Yeah, all the time they are retreating their discourse, trying to prevent to prevent more sanctions. Huh? So now they they are going uh, they are going to that discourse. I'm I'm honestly thinking, in view of the establishment in Ethiopia, I don't know anything about that, but. There must be a lot of people who will be thinking: Are we going to go back to, to, to totally be cut from all that world? And you know that Ethiopia has a lot, especially those 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 richer people, those big bigger shot, bigger shots. They have lots of relations with the United States, with the United States. Maybe one of the countries in Africa that has this type of strong connections is exactly. is all this elite that is in Addis Ababa. Are they going to will or? Will somebody come at a certain moment and say, Abi, now it's enough and uh, this cannot continue? Huh? Exactly. You can, you can also yeah. imagine something like that. Huh? Yeah, that's true. And um, my last question would be, given what we saw, and even if we uh, expected that there would be something that was you know, happening before November 4, we didn't expect this scale, these atrocities, unspeakable, mm -hmm. unspeakable crimes, suffering, and so on. So, how do you see, you know, the coming months and maybe a year or two playing out in your view? No, I cannot, I cannot, I cannot say that is, well, I can say some things, huh? Mm. You can say some things, and one thing maybe that is the Ethiopia that we have known. We were around, around 2006 up to 2010, we did three, four international conferences in Ethiopia. Mm based on our work in Tigray, but we expanded to whole Ethiopia. And we did field visits in our professional field all over Ethiopia to see the landscapes, to say it simply. Mm. We discussed with some colleagues that will never come back. Well, in our lifetime, we, we, we don't expect that to come back. We don't expect a country to be the, again peaceful because up to 2010, it was relatively peaceful. You could travel everywhere and, and mm. so on. We, we don't expect that whatever is going to and hopefully something gets settled, but we don't expect something like that to to come back sadly. Huh? So, but for the rest, I'm also not a political analyst, huh? so uh, 
you may ask them from Kittel or, or somebody like that, they will know they will know more than me about that. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I mean, the, uh, talking about the future, even uh, if it's your area of expertise, uh, is not easy. Uh, I mean, but, but we, we as soon, I, I know the people there, as soon as peace comes, whatever type of, well, no, not whatever type of peace, but as soon as peace comes and if people feel comfortable, they will rebuild it. Huh? And uh, I hope to help in, in that also. Because one thing that is still very present, of course, is the we call it the human capital. Mm. People, people are much more trained now than what they were at the more in 91, there was hardly any schooling. Yeah. Now, now you have a society that is largely schooled. So it will, it, 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 you know, Germany after the Second World War, they totally destroyed. And in 10 years it was, yeah, it was because there was a, there was a human capacity that was available. Mm. So in that sense, in that sense, I have hope to, to restart it. Mm run down and, and build it again, huh? but... Uh... Yeah, that's the kind of discussion actually people are having already, even if we are still in the woods, we are not out of the woods yet. Now uh, people are talking about rebuilding to grow faster and better. And uh, uh, something... Yeah, the resilience of the... Yeah, that's community. the term, that's the term, yeah. Yeah, and, uh, and uh, you know, the diaspora uh, to grow community who never had any experience of demonstrating or, you know, uh, coming together, uh, have now across the generation uh, have been doing amazing work in terms of at yeah. least voicing, you know, uh, yeah. for voiceless and so on. Yeah. So, Professor Jan Jensen, it was a great pleasure to have you on UMD Media. I'm uh, confident that viewers got uh, a lot from the work they have been working and understanding. So UMD Media is working on understanding, measuring, and doing. And there is a choice in, in that, uh, in terms of, you know, looking for evidence, looking for something, understand what's underlining uh, the issues or symptoms that we see. So uh, if you want, um, if, you are, if you were asked to, you know, pass message, say something in Tugrinya to the <laughs> people, this is a time to take the opportunity. Yeah, but, uh, I can only say, Ajokum, Ajokum Kulukum. Misakumina, Ajokum. Yaganele. Yaganele. Yaganele, Mr. John. Dogatan Bene Rahavana. Let's meet, uh, we will hopefully meet in Dogatan. Yes, and with, with, I should have. So was it in a? So was it in a? Wancha. So was it in a? Fagre Selam. Make a. I will make a. Amen. You can nail it. Thank you so much. And uh, this uh, hopefully is not the last time we'll be talking about Tugrai. Uh, we, we will uh, continue to converse on Tugrai and about Tugrai. Thank you so much for your time today. Ashi, thank you. Have a good one. Bye bye. Bye. Dear viewers, this will be a UMD Media Show with uh, Professor Jan Ninsen from Belgium, who have been very active uh, from the get go in terms of uh, the war on Tigray uh, on the humanitarian situation, from uh, organizing an appeal uh, to scholars uh, worldwide uh, in terms of uh, stopping the war to avoid catastrophe in uh, the human uh, dimension, uh, referring to what happened in 1984-1985 in that region. That killed uh, uh, hundreds of thousands of people and uh, led into uh, unspeakable human, uh, humanitarian catastrophe. This was your host, Gita Chosafa. Uh, I'll come with uh, another guest on uh, uh, another topic and similar topics. Bye for now.